Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this joint worship service between Grace United, St. Luke's United, Dunlop Central United, and London Road West United. My name is Adam Kilner, and I serve as the minister of Dunlop Central United. My pronouns are he, him, and I am absolutely delighted to welcome you here this morning. This is the first Sunday after Christmas, and we hope that you continue to feel the magic of Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ, uh, the celebration of creation, that, that God has, has come to dwell among uh, mortals such as us. Friends, wherever you are on life's journey, we are so glad that you are sharing the adventure at this moment in time with us. Welcome to worship. We acknowledge the sacred land we gather on as the traditional territory of the Ojibwe, Potawatomi, and Odawa First Nations, where majestic Lake Huron pours into mighty St. Clair River. As treaty members, we commit to reconciliation. We honor the heritage and gifts of Métis people. We gather to once again hear the angels announce the good news of Jesus' birth. To ponder the wonder of Jesus, as Mary did when she held her child. To, to glorify God as the shepherds did when they saw love lying in a manger. To remember that Jesus' love was an out-of-the-box kind of love. On that first Christmas, the prophets knew Jesus would grow to love without limits. Caring for strangers and friends alike. Instructing followers to love their neighbors. When Jesus said, love your neighbor, he meant everyone. His love was so profound that even from the very first day, the angels couldn't keep from singing. We've been singing along with the chorus of angels ever since. Glory, hallelujah, Christ is born. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. In the field abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Say Leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship.
Let us pray. O oh God, Christmas may be over, but the celebration of all that Jesus means for us has just begun. Over 2,000 years ago, hope, peace, joy, and love came to light in the birth of the Christ child. By the fire of Jesus' spirit, hearts like ours have been warmed ever since. And still today, we pray that love burns strong within us, such that friends and strangers find comfort and warmth by its glow. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Guess whose birthday it is? This guy. No, not me. My name's Pat Morrison, and it is not my birthday today. We are still celebrating Jesus' birthday. He be the birthday boy. And on Jesus' birthday, we sing birthday songs, like the one we're about to sing. He is born little child divine. Play the spoons and the kazoo merrily. He is born little child divine. Sing we all of the Savior mild. Now, the real words aren't actually play the spoons and the kazoo. The song actually names some other instruments like oboes and bagpipes. But I don't have an oboe, nor do I have a set of bagpipes. But what I do have is my daughter Lauren and her kazoo, and we have some spoons. So I'm wondering if we all go grab some spoons from the kitchen, and if you have a kazoo, grab that, or actually just a recorder, anything that makes noise at all, anything at all. Go get some pots and pans from the kitchen, anything that'll make noise, and then we can play them together merrily. Your parents are gonna love this. It's, it's so biblical. Let's make a joyful noise together. Trust me, your parents are gonna love this. Ready? This is my daughter, Lauren. We're good to go. She's gonna show you how to do it in five, four, three, two, one. He is born, little child divine. Play the spoons and the kazoo merrily. He is born, little child divine. Sing we all of the Savior mild. It feels good, doesn't it? Doesn't it? You're welcome, parents. You're welcome. So let's keep this going as we actually all sing it together. Over to you, Glenn. He is born, little child divine. Play on the reeds while the lutes are strumming. He is born, little child divine. Join the song to announce the day. Through long ages of the past, prophets have
Psalm 114 is about praise. And it's not just about how humanity praises God, it's about how God is praised throughout the cosmos. The first verses talk about how the angel, stars, and lights of heaven praise God. And then the psalm focuses on the earth, how the earth, including the mountains and trees and animals, glorify God. And finally, it concludes with us, God's people, from the highest heavens to earthly creatures, when God is present, creation sings, glory be to God on high. Does that sound familiar? Well, you're right. The angel sang, glory to God in the highest heaven, when Jesus was born, and just like the heavens proclaim God in Psalm 148, in Matthew's account of Jesus' birth, a star leads seekers to the stable. The idea is that when God is present, every element of the cosmos offers praise. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise God from the sky's boundary and the mountain's crown. All the angels praise God. Sun and moon and bright stars praise God. The waters and the waters above the heaven praise God. All of creation praises your unnameable name. God's timeless speech established and fixed the bounds of creation forever. All life of earth is your praise. All life of the sea and unknowable depths, fire and hail, snow and frost, tornadoes and hurricane, all God's speaking. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God's name alone is exalted. God's brightness lights up the earth and sky. We are raised up to blare out creation's song, an exuberant and faithful blast. A song for all who struggle and pilgrimage with the Creator. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Luke 2, 8 to 20. Listen to the Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke, as though I'm reading it to you for the first time. You may even want to close your eyes and visualize the scene. Note the variety of ways the characters in the story respond to the good news. Put yourself in their shoes. What would your response be? May God bless us with insight as we listen to the reading from our sacred scripture. In that, reading, there, in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good, no good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it 
have been told to them. What do you typically do on Boxing Day? Do you fall into a turkey coma? Do you hit the sails? Perhaps you tidy up the aftermath of company and all the gift wrappings. Myself, I spend the day in my pajamas watching movies. Well, after the shepherds visited the Holy Family and shared what the angels had told them about Jesus, namely that he would bring good news of great joy, Scripture says that Mary treasured their words and pondered them in her heart. In other words, she grew quiet and reflective. On the other hand, the shepherds went on their way glorifying and praising God. Treasure, ponder, glorify. All are appropriate responses to receiving profound news. In Matthew's Gospel, the Magi arrive on the scene offering gifts. Their response to hearing the news of Jesus' birth is to offer a gift that symbolizes who Jesus is, who he was, and what he would become. Boxing Day is a good day for treasuring the Christmas story and pondering the call it places on each of us. It's a good day for glorifying, and it's a good day for praising. It's a great day to contemplate generosity, as, a, as we'll explain after our song. Boxing Day was originally a day to give. Before Boxing Day came to be associated with turkey sandwiches, football, and discounts, it was known as a day to serve those who are poor. There are various theories about how Boxing Day came to be. One theory suggests it came from the practice of giving Christmas boxes to servants along with a day off following Christmas. Another theory suggests that the tradition came from a custom in the late Roman early Christian era wherein alms boxes placed in churches were given to those who were living in poverty on the feast of Stephen, St. Stephen, sorry, a Christian martyr known for charitable acts. Incidentally, the feast of St. Stephen falls on the second day of Christmas tide, and in some churches, Stephen is celebrated today. Regardless of which historical thread you follow, Boxing Day was always meant to be a day for contemplation and generosity. This morning, I would invite you to align yourself with the roots of this day, a day that calls us to compassion. Infant holy, infant lowly, for his bed a cattle stall, oxen low.
Christ, the greatest gift of all, was born for all. He made that clear in the life he would grow up to lead. In his life, he fulfilled the angel's promise that he would bring good news of great joy for all the people. Notice the scripture doesn't say for just some of the people. It says for all the people. Just because someone lives next door doesn't mean we should care more for them than we do someone who lives a block, a city, or a country away. God calls us to love our neighbor as ourselves. When Jesus was asked who our neighbor is, he essentially said everyone. Our collective mission and service strives to accomplish three things. To help transform and save lives, inspire meaning and purpose, and build a better world. As Christ followers, we aren't only interested in how our neighbors who are living down the street are doing. We are cared to call for the whole human family, including those living across Canada and around the world. As a United Church, we share our resources so we can have a bigger impact than any one of our churches could have alone. After we sing, Kenji will share David's story with you because it illustrates just how important it is that our generosity isn't constrained by artificial borders of geography or even judgment. anyone needs to hear great glad tidings, it's people like David who experience Christmas as one of the loneliest times of the year. Ten years ago, my wife and I were living our dream running a, su a successful catering business in Vancouver. That was before a drunk driver took her life, says David. And that was just the beginning. The heartbreak was still fresh for me when, six weeks later, a work accident claimed the life of my 23-year-old son. In the blink of an eye, he was gone. A few months later, I got a call that my daughter's car had veered from the road, and by the time she was found, she'd frozen to death. In five months, David's entire family was gone, and he turned to substances to numb the pain. My rock bottom came when I was arrested for carrying drugs. In jail, I had a lot of time to think about the man I wanted to become. I knew I needed to make some huge changes if I wanted to be happy again and become the man my beloved wife and kids knew me to be, he says. The Bissell Center, supported through your mission and service gifts, was the first place David went to when he was released. He says, the staff greeted me with kindness. Instead of judging me, they offered me a warm plate of food, and the staff told me about their mental health and housing support programs, and I was blown away. For the first time, I realized that I didn't have to rebuild my life alone. Your generosity through mission and service helps people like David start over. In their most painful hour, it is one of the ways that you and I tell them that they matter to us and that they matter to God. Is there a better gift than to let someone know that they are valued and loved just as they are? For 
The Christmas star has us focusing on light, finding it and following it. It's the mark in the sky that leads us to where we want to be. It's the, it's the place of arrival. It's the end of deep darkness. It's the sign that we've made it through struggle, through long waiting, through deep loss. I want to be there, to have a sense of having arrived, and to stand with others who've managed fierce struggle, managed long wandering and deep loss. But it's daunting to feel like, even after 21 months, that the light is still a long way off. But such moments remind me that even when our path is, is shadowed, that Christ calls us to look for what shimmers along the way. That though it might be some time before the path begins to look more brilliant to me, that there are moments of grace that offer that offer light enough for this moment, for, for this breath, and for this step. And these, these luminous moments also invite me to remember that Christmas is about knowing that the light has already arrived. Christmas asks us to open our eyes and to look for the light that is already here the illumination that might, might already be in the sky in ways that we have, we've not been willing or even ready to perceive. May we receive illumination enough for this next step, for this breath, and for this day. A poem by Jan Richardson. I cannot tell you how the light comes. What I know is that it is more ancient than you can imagine, that it travels across an astounding expanse to reach us, that it loves searching out what is hidden, what is lost, what is forgotten, what is in peril, or what is in pain, that it has a fondness for the body for finding its way toward flesh, and for shining forth through the eye, through the hand, and through the heart. I cannot tell you how the light comes, but only that it does, that it will, that it works its way into the deepest dark that enfolds you. 
though it may seem long ages in coming or arrive in a shape that you didn't foresee. And so may we this day turn ourselves toward it. May we lift our faces to let it find us. May we bend our bodies to follow the arc that it makes. May we open and open more and open still to the blessed light that comes. With the rush of Christmas just past and New Year's on the horizon, many of us would benefit from slowing down and listening for fresh ways that Jesus inspires us to live generously. I invite you to intentionally pray in silence with me this morning, setting aside the hustle and bustle of the season to be attentive to the Spirit. Now let us pray. Loving God, on this day that has become so much about buying and getting deals, we ask that you turn our attention to gratitude and generosity. Gratitude for what we already have and generosity to give what we can. Quiet us now, God, 
to open our hearts to you. In the silence of our hearts, we open ourselves to listen for one way you are calling us to give of our time this week. In the silence of our hearts, we open ourselves to listen for one way you are calling us to share our talent or our ability this week. In the silence of our hearts, we open ourselves to listen for one way that you are calling us to be generous with what we have this week. God, inspire us to live generously, not boxing in what we have to offer, but sharing it with our family, with our friends, and our neighbors at home and around the world. When we are tempted to limit love, open our hearts, God, and open our minds. Stir our hearts to care deeply, to live compassionately, to impress the world with your love. In the way of the one who taught us what it means to love our neighbor, we pray now, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Nothing boxed in Jesus' love. Not rules, not borders, not petty disagreements. We too are called to let love break loose in and through our lives. As we leave, may God bless us to live with a caring and daring love. One that not only knows it is better to give than to receive, but also that it's in giving that we truly do receive. May God, who is our Creator, and Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer, bless us to live generously today and in all the days to come. Amen. <laughs>